Welcome back to PAC. I'm Streaker6, and today I want to answer a question that some, or maybe even a lot of you might have. Can a person play DCS with dual joysticks instead of a hoe toss and rudder pedals? The quick answer is yes. I'm going to show you how I play DCS with dual joysticks and what I use for my key bindings on the UH1H Huey and list what I think are the pros and the cons at the end of the video. You may be asking yourself, why did he start playing DCS with dual joysticks instead of a hoe toss in the first place? The answer is simple. I was set up for playing Star Citizen, a space sim of sorts, if you haven't heard of it. Now I don't have a lot of money to be throwing around, so the expenditure of purchasing a hoe toss and pedals is not in the budget especially seeing as I already have the most important part, the joysticks. Now I use the Thrustmaster T16000M joysticks. They're sturdy, decent quality, and affordable. I just looked on Amazon and you can get a dual set for $110 right now. That's about $60 less than I paid for them five years ago. The same stick with hoe toss and pedals is $230 right now. I think I'm gonna stick with what I have. Okay, let's get on with it. First, let's go through the axis commands starting with my left hand stick. For the collective, which is right here, if you push it down, the collective will go down. If you pull it up, the collective will come up. Up and down. Forward and back, I should say. There are no cur curves set for the collective on the Huey, however, I do have the axis inverted. For the rudder or anti-torque, push the joystick to the left or the right to engage left and right yaw or anti-torque. I have a dead zone set to 10, more so to keep the uh, two actions separate between the collective and the anti-torque pedals. Now the throttle, which is right here, I have that set to the throttle slider on my left hand stick. To increase the, or to decrease the throttle, slide it down, to increase and in, slide it up. All helicopters will run at full throttle from the time they are started up until they are ready to be shut down. Okay, onto the right joystick. For the pitch, here's, here's where our right joystick's gonna be for the pitch. If you wanna move forward or put your nose down, you'll push forward on the stick. If you wanna nose up or move backward, you'll pull back on the stick. I have a curve of 10 set to this, this uh, binding. Now if you want to roll, push to the left, push to the right. That gives you your roll. I have a 10 curve set for this also. Now that we're past the basics, let's get on to some of the more important binds I think the Huey should have at a minimum on the sticks. First, the left hand joystick, you will want to bind the trigger as a modifier button as long as it is depressed. This will essentially double the amount of key binds you can have at your fingertips. Here's how you make it a modifier. First, you will want to go into your controls. Make sure that you're on the aircraft you're selected because this will be for each and every aircraft you'll have to do this. Click on modifiers at the bottom. Click on Add Under Modifiers, not Switches. Add Under Modifiers, Add. Select your joystick. This is my left joystick. Pull the trigger. I've already got it bound so it won't show up here. And if it, and if it doesn't show up, when you pull the trigger, find it in here. It'll be Joystick Button 1 on my sticks. And just select it on here and then hit OK. Once it's bound, it cannot be used for anything else other than a modifier unless it's unbound from that modifier status. Next, 
you'll want to bind autopilot so that you can look at the map and other various things. I use the hat switch and press it once to the right to activate it. Press it a second time to deactivate it. If you look up here, it'll turn, I'll move that, it'll turn white, I am auto, on autopilot. Now I'm off autopilot. I have auto unhook for external cargo bound to the hat switch. Press down once to activate it and a second time to deactivate it. I use button three as my push to talk button for SRS. Uh, the trigger modifier plus button three to change the radio channels and left button four to activate the intercom. That is all for SRS. So I don't bind anything else to these in uh, for my comms and I use that for all my aircraft that set up. Left button two is used for dispensing flares. I have button 12 for my landing light switch. Button 13 to extend. And button 14 to retract the landing light. Button 15 is used to stop the landing light. Onto the right joystick. The trigger. It's used for firing rockets and or miniguns when selected to fire manually. We will arm, and I'll show you. Okay. Joystick button three increases the rocket pairs. You look over here, down at the rocket pairs right there. I'm increasing the rocket pairs with button three. Now if I depress the left trigger, my modifier button, and press button 3 on my right stick, I decrease the rocket pairs. I use joy, joystick button 2 to zoom to do the slow zoom in. Left modifier or left joystick trigger modifier plus button 2 on the right stick to zoom back out. So, so that's how I zoom in and out with my joysticks. On the right hat, on the right stick hat switch, up is the ROE. If you look down here, you'll see that I am iterating the ROE by pressing up for my co-pilot. Left is for my left hand gunner. Right is my for my right hand gunner. Hat switch with the left joystick trigger depressed are as follows. Up will arm and dock the pilot sight. If I press down, I will arm, I will turn on the pilot sight switch. On and off. Left is the gun selector switch up and right is the gun selector switch down. On the base I have button 8 to toggle night vision on and off. Button 9 decreases the gain and button 10 increases the gain. Button 13 toggles the AI panel on or off. Button 12 toggles the controls indicator at the top left hand of the screen on or off. Button 14 will open or close the left gunner door. <laughs> Button 15 does the same for the right gunner door.
There are many different bindings a person can use while using dual joysticks. These are just the ones I find most important and work for me. On to the pros and cons. In my opinion, to using a dual joystick setup for DCS. The pros, affordability. Typically speaking, using dual joysticks is far less cost than purchasing a HOTAS and rudder pedal setup. Two, there's less equipment. It's one less peripheral to maintain or replace, less space and mounting requirements, and it also requires one less USB port. And we all know how those get pretty limited rather quickly. The cons. Hands are required to be on both sticks giving inputs at almost all times. As the sticks auto center, when you remove your hands, any aircraft that does not have a full autopilot function requires a lot of talent just to open up and check the F-10 map. This does not affect the Huey as it does not have an autopilot, or as it does have autopilot. Number two, the rudder input. Seems to be suit either too sensitive or not sensitive enough if I add too much curve or desaturation. Also, I find myself adding a little rudder input at almost all times unintentionally. That's all I can think of for the pros and cons, so not a lot either way. If you use dual joysticks already in D DCS, or you're new to DCS and are already set up for space simming and give DCS a try with your dual sticks, let me know what you find as pros and cons in the comments below. If you have found this content helpful, please give the video a like as it really does help this video reach a broader audience. And let me know in the comments below if you would like to see how I set up my other helos with dual sticks. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.